My name is Stuart Ralston. I'm really excited to be here. I'd like to say uh, thanks to Alec and Catherine. Although I don't know, I haven't seen her yet tonight. Uh, but thanks for you guys for hosting, for putting me on. Um, hello to all of you guys, all you new folks. And uh, what I want to talk to you about tonight is what I believe is part of the future of education. Uh, it's a pretty exciting program uh, called the Virtual Field Trip, and it was created this year in a classroom in Beijing. So. A little bit more about me and who I am and what I will tell you about. Uh, I have a little bit of international experience. This is something about uh, 10 years, uh, a little over 10 years. And uh, those are some of my students, my first year teaching here. Uh, not only do I work with students in the classroom, I also train teachers in how to use new tech tools to transform the way we teach and learn. And one of the things that I want you guys to think about our field trips. All right, so hopefully, somewhere in your educational experience, you were taken on a field trip and you got on a bus maybe and went somewhere and everybody was excited. And what I'd like to see is just a raise of hands. How many of you have gone on a field trip as part of an educational experience? College. All right, hey, fantastic. That's, that is almost everybody. So, way to go. All right, now, uh, let's see. Hands up again. All right, yes, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, the shirt with polka dots, and where did you go? Denmark. Denmark? Yeah. From? America. Wow, that, 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 that is not right, that's, that's wonderful. And, and that's fantastic. Uh, what do you remember? Okay, I'm putting, I'm putting you on. Um, Lack of sunlight. Uh -huh. Great architecture. Okay, great architecture. Yeah. Quite quiet. Civilized people. So, civilized people. <laughs> okay, very good. Very good. So we can see then some of the some of the benefits of field trips are exposure to new ideas, uh, exposure to the world, exposure to uh, new ways that people handle the same problems that we have. And sometimes it's just a fascinating new experience that kind of opens their eyes to what else is there. Right? But there's some problems associated with field trips too. Think of a problem associated with a field trip. Cost. Cost, thank you very much. Not everybody can go to Denmark from the United States for Denmark Awareness Week. Yes, what else? Legal liability. Legal liability, absolutely. It's an issue that uh, educators deal with when we talk about uh, working with the, our children, and it's very, uh, very tricky, and hopefully beneficial as well. Yeah. Overbearing guardians that just didn't let you go. Overbearing guardians. Because I had two kids that did on the field trip. Oh man, because isn't there always the teacher or the parent that says it's just a day out of the classroom, right? <laughs> if you're just gonna like the gym teacher says, no, that day we're teaching push-ups, and you need to be here, so I'm not letting you go on the field trip because you're gonna, you're never gonna learn push-ups. So, okay, so there are problems. It's too expensive for everybody to go, okay? It can be very difficult to remember what you learn on this mind-expanding day out of the classroom, which makes other teachers say it wasn't worth it. Maybe even parents say it wasn't worth it, all right? So, what I'm gonna tell you about today was an experience that I had with my students earlier this year in Beijing that was <laughs> unforgettable. And they won't forget it. And they won't forget what we learned, for some very special reasons. First, they told me. Okay, so, this is uh, one of the student's photos. Uh, he graduated this year and is now going to school in New York. And I uh, got a tag in the photo. He said, this is an album that he put together. He said, this is an unforgettable field trip. And there we are, coming into the outer court of the Forbidden City. And what we did there was, it wasn't your normal field trip. Normal field trip, you get on a bus, you go somewhere, you talk to an expert, and they say, let me tell you about what we do. And they talk, 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 talk. And then students are really amazed, but they can't really focus that well, because especially teenage years, and especially young kids, young kids' attention span is very narrow, very short, and teenagers are always hyper-social. So there's somebody talking, but they're more interested in their peer. So what we did with this field trip, we said, all right, before the field trip, I laid down a map. I said, we have a very, very, very special opportunity, thanks to your parents and the administration, we're gonna to go to the Forbidden City in Beijing, which was about three miles from where we were, 
Many of these kids had never left the campus of the school. They were studying world history in Beijing, and they never left their campus, which to me was a crime. So I said, all right, we're going to the Forbidden City. Here's a map. Choose a building that you are going to be the expert on. Right? We had already scaffolded. We had already talked about research skills, valid sources, and and uh, just the right, play, right way to get information together. They already practiced presentations, et cetera. So I said, all right, you're gonna have a three to five minute lecture on a building or a topic related to the Ming Dynasty in China. And students are like, oh, all right. And so they signed up, they started their research project. We went and we shot 16 videos. Each video, three to five minutes. And from that, the Students created a transcript of what they said. A lot of my students were ESL students, so uh, their English is not always that straightforward. It can be a little bit hard to follow. All right? So they created a transcript that said what they, what they talked about, and they also created quiz questions. So here we have teenagers listening to teenagers, talking to teenagers about the, the content that we're trying to study. They're there, they're learning it. One of the students said to me, you know, Mr. Ralston, I, I've been here two times already. And it's like I'm here for the first time. So something about that structure made it so that they remembered, they knew what was going on, they were really absorbing the content. Student-centered, student-created, pop down a video, all right? Sounds like a good field trip with some videos that maybe you can show parents. But then what we did different is what happened next. So here we have, uh, this is the field trip website that we put together. It's called Virtual Field Trip. We call it China Files, right? <laughs> and this is the thank you to the parents, et cetera, et cetera. Available on Google Earth, also available in the website. So your normal virtual field trip, the classic version, is a teacher saying, go to a website, you're gonna learn about this place that you've never been, uh, maybe watch a video, maybe read the content, et cetera, then. So, normal virtual field trip. This is kind of the, the standard model for what is now considered virtual field trip. <coughs> except that it's student generated. Right. Each, each student has their own video. Uh, Albert, Albert's from Tanzania, and he spoke about the Meridian Gate. He has quiz questions here, transcript about what he wrote, and then links to the other videos. All right, so this is the standard. This is anybody who can get on the internet now can go here. But what makes it good, not just for the students who are there, but for the students who would be interested in this anywhere else in the world, is that it's not this style, it's not lecture style, it's not I'm going to tell you what it is, it's the student going, I want to learn about the Forbidden City, what do I want to learn about today? So now they just download a KMZ file, it's very small, and they will have access to all of the videos that we put together, all of the quiz questions that we put together, <clears throat> not just on a website, but placed within the structure of Google Earth. So now, any student in the world can download a KMC file, can download Google Earth for free. All right, they can say, well, what do I want to learn about? Do I want to learn about the Meridian Gate, Golden River, the Outer Court, Lives and Rules of the Unix, Hall of Supreme Harmony. Wow, Supreme Harmony sounds great. Let's learn about Supreme Harmony. Each video is placed in the near exact video placement of that speaker, all right? So you're in this, thank you Google, you're in this 3D rendered edition, um, <clears throat> example of the Forbidden City. You know, you can look around and it's almost like you're right there. The whole learning experience happens right within Google Earth. You have the questions are here, the transcripts are here, and then this is the video. <laughs>
in different time period. For example, uh, in, during Ming Dynasty. All right. So 16 videos like that, all about the Ming Dynasty, by students, for students, for free, on the web, for any teacher in the world to download and show to their class. But what's great about this is that it's just the kernel, it's just the beginning because any teacher in the world can follow the same format and we can create a whole layer within Google Earth of historical places, student-driven learning, uh, constructivist knowledge that is engaging to the learner and engaging to others who are trying to learn from the teachers, putting the students in the teacher's place, et cetera, et cetera. I'm out of time, so I guess I'll take, do I have time for a question? Okay.